friends, it's Carolyn Sook here with Seasook Stitch, and today is Saturday, May 7th, 2022. Welcome to my channel about craft stitch. I'm so glad that you are here spending part of your day or your evening with me. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hear my neighbor is out um, weed whacking or something, maybe? Uh, it's Saturday, so I guess that's to be expected. Um, how did it get to be May 7th already? That's like a week into May. May just started. Anyway, it's been a good week. It's been a long week, a productive week. Um, we had finals at the college that I teach at. We had It was finals week, so that went off well. The students did great. They gave presentations of projects that they had worked on throughout the semester, and they turned out so good. So I'm thrilled about that, and now it's just the kind of final grading scramble to the end. Final grades are due on Tuesday, um, which I think I think everybody has turned everything in now, so I don't have to track people down. Yes, I track people down. I'm nice like that. Um, and so it's now just up to me, but I think we're close. We're close to finishing the semester, and then... I have a week to prep for my summer session that starts uh, a week from this Monday. So it's all good. <laughs> We're getting there. Um, I wanted to uh, do some April stats because I realized I didn't do that last week. Because last week I think was the last day of April maybe. Or maybe it was May 1 when I actually filmed. I don't know. Anyway, I didn't do April stats. So I will do April stats for you. I had one new start that was the educated piece by Bent Creek. That was my new start. I had zero finishes for the month. Um, I stitched a total of 106 hours in, during the month, and I'm still at 45 whips. Um, so there you go. <laughs> um, okay, let's get into it. I have some questions. Um, so Carol, Carol asked... Will you show your Hearthside Craftworks stand? I have the lap stand from them. Um, will you show it all set up and how you stitch on it? And I will. Um, I replied to your comment as well, Carol. But um, I will, but it will probably be a little bit later um, this summer, um, just when I have a little bit more time. Um, so if you can hang in there, I'm thinking maybe July, I'll get it set up and kind of show you how I stitch on it and all that. So if that's all right, I will definitely, I'll do a separate video of it. Um, and then we can, um, go from there. I have to also figure out how to set. I know a lot of other people like set up their cameras somehow to do like an over the shoulder view, uh, while they're stitching. So I'm going to try to figure that out as well. So yes, I will, I will do a full setup. There is a video of how I put it together, but I think what she's asking is, I want to see it with fabric on it and how you actually stitch on it. So I can do that. Um, so I love these questions. Dawn, my my really sweet friend Dawn, asked me, are you planning to use uh, the floor, your, your it's actually a lap stand, um, with the stitching shelf? And honestly, I hadn't thought about it. And now that you bring it up, probably yes, that that is a good idea. I probably should. Um, because that one's going to be so giant. I think my only hesitation is I should probably check the fabric. I should probably figure out what fabric I'm going to use and then check the fabric size and make sure I have rods here at the house that will fit it. So because if I have to order new rods for this project, which is fine because I mean, this is as we have discussed on this channel, if you do 100 stitches a day, it's going to take you 10 years to do it. And we all know I'm not going to do 100 stitches a day. So, um, so it's fine to buy new rods for it. Um, I just need to see what I'm dealing with here. So Dawn, that's a great suggestion. And thank you for kind of getting my butt in gear <laughs> to start thinking about this in case I do need to order scroll rods. I mean, I could always start it on a Q-snap and then change over to scroll rods. But yeah, I guess I, I will plan to use it um, for the stitching shelf. I haven't used it recently. I don't know why. It's, it was packed up for like a year and a half. I'm going to use that excuse for as long as I can. We're coming up to a year of me living in this house, so I have to find new excuses. But anyway, and then Lilia, you asked, when do you start stitching, stitch, when are you starting a stitching shelf? And then the very next comment was hers saying, 
oh, I watched the rest of your video. <laughs> I, I see that. But just in case you didn't see the video last week or you don't know what's going on, there is a group of us, a, quite a big group of us, um, that is going to be starting a stitching shelf. It's a Heaven and Earth Designs. Uh, it's uh, artwork by Amy Stewart, um, Tina from Tina Stitches, and Kim from Stitch and Stuff um, are the, we're all planning stuff to start it. Um, and then several of you are starting it or already have started it. So we want to do a, a big 10, 15, 20 year sow, however long it takes us. So this will be quite fun. Um, I looked for my printout. I can't find my printout. I'm in a bit of a hurry today, too, because I have to go to uh, graduation. Um, so I was kind of running around trying to prep for this video, which I wanted to get done. Um, and I couldn't find my printout of a stitching shelf. So if I have an easy um, picture, I'll put it here. Maybe instead of doing that, I'll just look. If you don't mind, I never look on my phone when I'm doing these. A stitching shelf paid okay so I can just do this this is um this is how um, Mandy does it she doesn't she her phone or something doesn't allow her to edit very well very easily um so she just uses her iPad which I think is really smart and then you don't have to edit okay hopefully you can see this okay but if I turn it look at this fancy phone technology guys okay <laughs> so this is what it looks like Amy Stewart um, they also sell each scene individually. So if you're like, I don't really want to stitch a 725 by 518 stitch um, piece, you can, um, they pull out each of those scenes or not, I don't, maybe not every single one of them, but like uh, there's several to choose from. And each row is a season. So I think this is spring, summer, fall, winter. Winter is very clear that it's winter. Um, and so it's like a seasonal, which you know I love seasonal. I know Kim loves seasonal. So we're going to start it. We're doing the Max Colors, uh, which has 238 uh, different colors, uh, which means there's probably not going to be a whole lot of block uh, colors. So we are starting this on August 12th, this summer, which is World Cross Stitching Day or summer for us, um, it will be winter for some of you. Um, but um, World Cross Stitching Day, August 12th, we are going to do, at some point, we're going to do a video of how we're prepping and planning and floss storage and all that. So, like, we'll, we'll, we'll have a lot more information coming as the summer goes along on what we're doing, um, and all that. So stay tuned, but, um, I'm super excited and I love that so many of you have already started it and want to join us or are thinking about starting it. So that's really awesome. It'll be really fun, I think, and a great support group as well. Okay. I wanted to make sure that I mentioned our dear friend, Lynette Peters. She is the one who designed Carolyn and her cats for me, which I also forgot to pull down, but you have seen it on here. Carolyn and her cats. She's the designer of that one. She has started a floss tube channel. It is called X stitch and hexagons, which is also the name of her Etsy shop. So she just released her first floss tube. So I wanted to mention it here. I'll link it down below. And uh, go check her out. Her first, her first one is only 10, 11 minutes, and she sh shows gorgeous pieces. She shows a quilt that she did, a lap quilt. It's stunning. Um, so yeah, so please go check her out. She's a lovely, lovely person, and it's so fun to get to know. Like I've only communicated with her over um, like Messenger or in the comments or email, you know that type of thing. So it's really fun to get to see her kind of live and in person. So go check out Lynette's Floss Tube. All right, let's get into, did I cover everything so far? Yes. Let's get into stitching. I have a new start. I started Funky Flowers by By the Bay Needle Arts. That's what it looks like. Um, with Jan of Jan Hicks Creates. Um... This is our hashtag funky flowers sal hashtag year of Jan and Carolyn. 
So I started with number one. There are 24 of these, and you don't have to buy all 24. You can get them in hard copy, which I have, or you can get them in PDF. So instant gratification. So much fun. So I'm starting with one. This is based on her layout. You don't have to do it in this layout at all. You can do however you want. And I am stitching this on 28 count um, truffle by Picture This Plus. This is the same color fabric that uh, Summer Quakers by Rosewood Manor is on. And so I got a good start. I was stitched on this for two days this week. And this is where I'm at. Now, what's fun about this, so this is 28 count. Jan is stitching hers on a 56 count, and it's a, a, I can't remember the color, but it's like a brown. It really looks like soil, like the flowers grow in. And um, we're going to take these to StitchCon Weekend A and um, compare them side by side, because hers will literally be half the size of this. So these are mostly the called for colors. I was going to use my leftover Valdani's and whatnot, but I had most of the DMC here at home already, and I said, why not? Um, and I was really tempted because, like, these colors kind of hurt my teeth a little bit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, together. Like, they're pretty, but they also kind of clash. But I think that's the point, right? They're funky. Um, it looks like what it looks like in the picture. So I'm going to keep it. Because my, my inclination was to tone it down a little. But that, I think, will take the funky out of it. And I think when it's all, I'm doing them all in one piece. So here's my fabric, right? Um, I think it'll be fine. And what I've decided, so there are these, every single one of these have these little dots in it. And so what I'm going to do, I think, I just, I had to do some dots to get my placement right for this. Um, and I just pulled colors that are going to be in all, the, there's four across the top. So I just pulled some colors from that, and I think I'm just going to sprinkle that across the top and um, instead of doing them all in the yellow, I think. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with the dots yet. Like I said, I just put those in um, for placement for the flower. So I got a little over six hours of stitching on this, and I mean, the flower's almost done, really. Um, so these will go fast, I think, uh, and they're really fun, and they're really pretty. This one will come out next month, I believe I have on the docket. So that's my new start. So add one to the new start category. Next up, though, I have a finish. So they cancel out, right? I did. I finished. So many of you were so um, encouraging and supportive of all my plans for May, which my plans for May are to finish a bunch of smaller pieces. So I have cat hair all over it. <laughs> so I finished First Snow by uh, Drawn Thread, and here's what it looks like. It's a freebie on their page. Look at that. I have to iron it, but it's darling. I love it so much. It makes me so happy. Like, I just, I love it. I think it's such a sweet little piece, and I almost want to have it framed because I think it would look really cute in a really little frame. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it yet. This is on 28 count dove gray. Um, this was, I got, I don't know, a yard or two from Rita Reens a couple years ago um, and started this on it. I love it. The only real change, I mean, I just used floss I had at the house. I didn't buy anything new. The snow falling, they're supposed to be Smyrna crosses. I just did them as crosses because you can't really tell the difference. I don't know. This piece in all took me eight hours to complete, a little over eight, like eight and a quarter. Um, so it's not too bad. And like, because these branches, while it looks like a lot, and it is a lot of stitching, uh, but it goes really fast. That was really fun to do, the branches of the tree. I love it. I think it's super, super cute. So that's first snow. Um, this I also stitched for um, the acrostic um, for Magazine Monthly Challenge. Uh, the acrostic is sound, S-O-U-N-D. And this was by the drawn thread. So this was my D. 
Um, and again, this is, if you Google first snow freebie, the drawn thread or something like that, it will come up for you. I think it's still available. I checked recently and it was still there. So yay. So I'm happy about that. Cheers to my first, uh, finish of May. And then the other whip that I worked on, uh, this week, which I don't have the picture for, but you'll get an idea was Bayoon Cat. This is the big piece that I hope to finish this month. I may have bit off a bit more than I can chew. I was thinking that on, so I've worked on this for three evenings, uh, so about nine hours this week. And what I got done was I got this top row, of the cat's back, that all finished. Um, that wasn't started yet. So I got that all done. And then I came up here and I did this motif, some of these little blue sprinkles you see, and this motif. I love this top layer. It just makes me so happy to look at, especially this one. It's very Christmassy looking. Um, so I really like that. Now, the reason why I said I bit off more than I could chew, there's a big tree that goes here, and then there's some trees and stuff that go along here, and then underneath that is like some mice. So I've allotted, I allotted originally six days to this this month to finish it. I've already used up half of them and I'm just starting to down this side. So that's why I'm saying I may be a bit off a little bit more than I could chew, but I'm not giving up yet because it's only May 7th. So first snow, I allotted two days to work on. I finished it in one because I worked extra. I think I worked on it almost five hours last night to finish it up. Um, so I'm going to take that extra day and apply it to Bayoon Cat just to help push it along. Because how cool would it be if I finish I mean, it's not the end of the world if I don't finish it. But now that I think I can't do it, I'm kind of determined to do it. <laughs> That's how I operate. Prove myself wrong. So I love it. I love how it's coming together. It's so cute. And I just love the designs and the cat. So that is Bayoon Cat that I'm working on. Here it is in the, the Garan cat bag, which I have a few of these, if I'm being honest. Uh, so that's what I worked on this week. So pretty good. Not too many projects, but some good progress anyway. All right, let's do haul. So haul, I went to Joann's because I got motivated to go to Joann's because, and I got some floss for a stitching shelf. This is just all DMC. I've just been collecting it in batches. Um, that's floss for a stitching shelf. There's 238 of them, so fun. And then I saw this at the checkout. I picked up Cross Stitch Favorites Spring Summer 2022. This is a, a EU uh, magazine. Not EU, but... Um, UK, UK magazine. Um, so I will do, you can see I have something marked. I'll do a flip through maybe tomorrow on this um, because this should still be available. Um, like I said, I got it at Joann's just in the, where the magazines are. So I'll do a flip through. There's a lot of smalls in this one. This one is mostly smalls. So if you like smalls, you want to watch for that flip through. I'll do that tomorrow. So I got that. And then I was on Stash Unload and I picked up a back bag of DMC. Um, I really like buying just lots of DMC because um, I just add these to my stash. That's all I'm going to do with it. Uh, so I thought that was pretty fun. Um, and then I got this Mirabilia Crystal Symphony. Uh, this is a Nora Corbett. I think she's so pretty. She was on my wish list on, on um, 1, 2, 3 Stitch, but somebody was selling it. Um, so I thought I'd pick it up. I think she's so pretty. Um, there's a lot of white in there, of course. I don't know. It's just gorgeous. I think she's so pretty. So I'm going to add that to my, to my collection. And then I, um, have, you know, I love, where is it? Charisse from Stitchingly Along. I show her needle minders a lot on here. 
She has an Etsy shop. She also sells a lot of her needle minders on um, the sash unload pages. Um, she also has other things like um, threaders and stuff like that. But I really like her, her needle minders. So I asked her if she does custom orders, and she does. And so I got a couple of custom orders. And this is to prepare for Purple Rain that I'm starting with Candy, um, the 614 Stitcher, in June. Um, and I think Laura is starting it with us and hopefully others too. So this is what I got. I got one of those. I just found the image online and she put it in there for me. So that's it has kind of like a little bubble on top. So that will be great for Purple Rain. And then I couldn't decide, so I had her make this one too and I know you can't see it's kind of small but way over there is a dove so love it I'm so excited to put these on my project um so that's fun so highly recommend Cherise she is happy to work with you if you have a custom custom idea okay I think that's all of my haul um Giveaways from last week, I've heard from everybody except for Patty Hinman. So, Patty, you won the faith chart, and I just need your address to send it out to you. So, Patty Hinman, um, I'll give you one more week, um, and then we'll have to move on to somebody else um, to get this. But everybody else, I plan to get those out Monday morning to you uh, in the mail Monday morning. So, awesome. All right. Plans for this week. My plans. Um, so Bayoun Cat, which I just showed, we're going to work on that three or four days, hopefully get three or four days in this week. My focus piece to finish, focus on a finish, um, for this week is going to be Mom's Collection because it's Mother's Day here in the U.S. Um, tomorrow. <laughs> I always think it's next week. It's not next week. It's tomorrow. Um, all stitchers are collectors. I just think this is a darling piece, and you can kind of customize it however you want. I have a lot to go on this. I, again, am overestimating how long this is going to take me. I've allocated two days to it, um, but you can see I'm not very far along at all. That's all I have. It looks like a pie. It's sitting because it doesn't have any back stitching in it yet, but it's not a pie, I promise. It's some fabric. So I have that much done, which is not too much. Um, so hopefully I can do it in two days. We'll see. We'll we'll carve out pockets. This is just uh this is a 25 count. I'm doing a two over two on 25 counts. So it's gonna be big, but that's actually what it called for. So that's fine. Um I have it right from a previous hade when I was doing it over one. So um, that's where we're at. So hopefully we'll get this finished. Um, at least all the stitching. There there are some, like when you put it all together, right, there's some little things that you have hanging out. Um, so I'm not sure how much of that I'll get done, but if I can at least get, the stitching and the back stitching done and then piece it together. Cause I think this will look really cute in, um, my stitching room, my, um, yeah, my craft room. No, it's not done yet. <laughs> uh, and it's in this really cute, perfect stitching bag from Garan. So we're going to work on that. We're going to work on Bayoun Cat and then we're going to work on, Oh gosh, this is so heavy. Cat alphabet. I'm trying to figure out why this is so heavy. Should have pulled it out before we started. Um, Cat Alphabet is a hade. It's, um, there's all my floss. I can show you these floss tabs in action, um, which I showed a couple weeks ago, these floss tags that go on. Um, Cause I'm, I'm kind of transitioning somewhat to rings. If there's, a reasonable amount of floss, like 80, 90 different colors, which this one has, um, that I'm putting them on, on floss rings. And I got these tags, which I showed a couple weeks ago. Um, and I just put the name of the 
project and the range of um, floss numbers on here, um, just in case these somehow get separated from the project, then I at least know what project they belong to. And then I have all my extra floss on these things, which I don't really love the way I did that, but it's done, so that's the way it's going to be. Okay, so cat alphabet. This is what it will. This is what it will look like. Of course, I'm right up in here. Not fun. And this is what it looks like now. Before I've stitched on it this month, I'm um. My plan is to stitch on this one day a month, uh, which is not much, but we're making progress anyway. Um, you can see the outline of the C here for a cat. So that's, we're making progress. I have plans for next year for this to make a little more progress on it. Um, so that will be fun to see this kind of coming together a little bit more. But yeah, that's where we're at with that. All right, so those are my plans. So I'm going to give that one day. So one day for Cat Alphabet, four days for Bayonne Cat. That's five days. Two days for Mom's Collection. That's seven. So hopefully that will be enough to get Mom's Collection done or mostly done. We'll see. Um, I'm trying to work on the pieces I plan to finish for May. I'm trying to work on them on the weekends because if I need to stay up late like I did last night to finish up for snow, I'm able to do that and sleep in a little bit uh, in the morning. All right, that's all I have. I am going to, um, there's not much editing for this one, so I will probably just straight upload it. And then um, we will go to graduation and watch the students graduate, and that will be super fun to see them. All right, everyone, I will see you tomorrow for the flip through in the magazine. Otherwise, if you're not interested in watching flip throughs, I will see you next week. Bye, everyone.